placing it near the escarpment, and the reason why I think is now relatively apparent, it wasn't initially, because I lost them. They weren't where I left them this morning. So we've arrived at a pride of lions that this morning were feeding upon a buffalo carcass. And supposedly, it is part of the sausage tree pride. I'll explain what I mean by supposedly, because I'm a little confused. Hello, girl. Just give her a little bit of extra room. There we go. Fat, flat and happy lions. The reason that I say I'm a little bit confused about their identity, when I first arrived here, I was told that the Sausage Tree Pride, I think it con I, my records, I wrote it down as consists of three, no, five females and some older cubs. Obviously, we've got two young males included in this, and we've got what looks like one very young female. And then, of course, we've got the two females that we see regularly with the four cubs. And I'm not entirely sure how they all fit in with each other. They definitely have adjacent territories um, up against the escarpment. I've never seen our two females with the young cubs around here. But it could be that they've separated for a little bit with the little cubs just for some reason to keep them safe. Perhaps there were males in this area pushing in that would have been a threat to those cubs. I'm not 100% sure exactly how everything ties in yet. I'm going to have to try and get a little bit more history on the Sausage Tree Pride when we have the opportunity to do so. They definitely hang out in one of the prettiest places, though. Both the two females and this group of lions. Now, this morning they were munching on a buffalo, but it was quite a small buffalo. A young, it looked like a young female, what was left of it. And they'd pretty much finished it by the time we got here. And I would say that the young males probably got the majority of it. Ah, uh, Christina is commenting on our proximity to the lions and saying it's amazing that they don't seem to care. How, why don't they seem to care about us being as close as we are? Um, Christina, it's, it's simply due to the fact that this is an area where there has been a relatively large amount of tourism. And they've become very, very accustomed to seeing safari jeeps and seeing researchers in vehicles. So it's something that they've grown up with from a very young age. And they are comfortable with the presence of vehicles. They don't see us as food. I personally, and I, I know I'll get a lot of flack for, for this from people who disagree with me, um, but I personally don't believe that the lions don't recognize individual people in the vehicle. What I mean by that is supposedly they don't, they don't see humans in the vehicle. They only see the outline of the vehicle. I think the fact that we sit and we talk and we move, I, I don't think their eyesight is really that bad. So that is a theory that I completely disagree with. But I do think that they have come to the conclusion through years and years and decades of habituation, they've come to the conclusion that a human being in a vehicle does not mean something dangerous. If I were to get out of the car now and walk at them, that would be an entirely different story. And they would most likely run away. They might charge me purely out of fear. And they would be afraid of me. And that's, that changes completely at night, which is when the lions really come into their own. And a person walking around on foot at night is at enormous risk of being attacked by a lion. We've even noticed that they're much bolder with the vehicles at night. We've had a few moments where the lions have actually come up and had a look at our tires, looked into the car with us, I nearly had a cub sub-adult try and jump into the car because it was playing. Playful, not, not aggressive. But we're more, we are completely and utterly safe. Um, Christina, I did contemplate that. You want to know if these lines are perhaps a, a breakaway that have come together for a meal. I don't see our two females here at all. 
So, so I don't think that they're here with the ones that have the young cubs. But yes, I think there is a possibility of a breakaway. And I would suggest that the breakaway is actually probably the two females with the youngest cubs. And the reason that I say that is just because in terms of lion dynamics, that's usually when you get a breakaway, is when females have young cubs and there might be some kind of threat from males that are not the fathers of those cubs. And those females up and move away from the threat, whereas the rest of the pride stays behind. My theory falls down in one major respect in that there are two young males with this group. Oh, quick, over to Ali. 